Hey, I'm Nick, and today I'm going to do a review of my Hammer C3 41 Comfort after about 15 months of ownership and talk a little bit about, you know, what I like about it, uh, a few things that maybe could use a little bit of improvement, and, you know, hopefully that'll be helpful for people. I've had a few people ask me to talk about how I like it, so, uh, so here we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the the joiner and the planer. And, you know, to be honest with you, this is pretty easy because I'm very happy with both the joiner and the planer. I mean, they, they work very well. They came well set up from the factory. Uh, I did have to do some minor adjustments on the jointer when I first got it, but that was probably more due to, you know, some issues when I installed it than anything else. Um, yeah, it works really well. I get very good results um, with both, especially the planer. Um, you know, nice clean finish. Uh, it's very accurate. It's repeatable. Uh, I've gotten virtually no snipe on anything I've put through it unless I really mishandled the piece coming out of the, the outfeed. A um, couple of things about the joiner, you know, just minor things. So I do, I do have this um, extension table that I bought along with the machine. I have used it a few times as a in-feed extension table. Uh, when I'm running longer pieces and it and it works well, but in general the joiner tables, you know, they're nice and long, no issues there. The helical head cuts great. I mean, it's been 15 months. I haven't changed anything. Uh, haven't had to rotate the blades. Uh, I gotta say, you know, and this is probably just an American thing versus a European thing. I don't I don't love the blade guard. Uh, I'm used to the more American style having a blade guard that swings out of the way, but that's it's a relatively minor point. Um, you know, I, in, in the, the video where I talk about putting this thing in, I mean, I talk about how I've got this post here, uh, which is, you know, super inconvenient in terms of where it's located, but I, I can't really do much without putting in a giant steel beam in my basement. Um, and it's a little bit of a hassle, but to be honest with you, working around, it, it's not that terrible. Um, the only other observation I have about the joiner, and it's something that, you know, it's super minor. I don't even really know if it's an issue, but the... And it's going to be hard to tell in this video, but the finish on the table is different than the finish on, for instance, the table saw. So I don't know if you can see, but like if you see how the, the table saw is kind of shiny, um, you know, it's more of what one would expect in a cast iron table. Like it's been, you know, it's not polished, but it was, you know, machined and then, I don't know, ground flat with a finer, a finer grid or a finer device. Whereas the... The joiner table, I don't know, it's 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 hard to explain. It's it's a it's like it just didn't get its final finish. And I don't know if you can I'm gonna try to make this sound and I don't know if you can hear it, but you know, you can kind of hear how there's a little bit of like a, a texture to it. And it's it's really not problematic. It does probably introduce a little bit of friction when I'm feeding wider or longer pieces, but I just find it odd. It's not a it's not a problem. Um, so, bottom line, overall joiner, super happy with it. Very good machine. Um, you know, I've got the 16 inch wide model, so yeah, overall very happy with it. Um, on the planer, like I said, overall very happy. The one thing I will point out, so I did get the um, the dial. You know, it's an additional item or an optional item, but it's a dial that wrote, you know, as you rotate the wheel, it gives you the setting and it's, it's great. It's super accurate. It's, it helps you come back to whatever setting you want. And I find that I can plane to within a couple of thousandths. And that's obviously, you know, more than accurate for most people. So yeah, uh, joiner planer, other than a couple of minor things, oh, I, I do want to say also dust collection on them both is good. Um, no issues there. Uh, people talk about, you know, I've gotten comments it's not a production machine. Well, that's very true. It's not a production machine. Um, you know, if you had to take the time to flip over between the joiner and the planer when you're trying to get a lot of work done, yeah, it's, you know, it's problematic. But as you can see, I'm working here in my basement. I'm not running a production shop. For my purposes, it works great and it's a space saver. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, overall, very pleased with it. All right, so next, uh, let's talk about the shaper a little bit. So I've used the shaper a handful of times over the last 15 months. Uh, most recently, just a week or two ago, I ran 28 pieces, coping stick, 
for uh, making windows and doors. So pieces that are inch and three quarters thick. And, you know, this is a, it's an inch and a quarter bore shaper spindle. So very stable, very accurate, no issues there. Um, I did get the, so this is a half inch collet router uh, spindle that you could put in there, which basically, you know, turns this thing into an extremely expensive router table. Um, but, you know, that works really well. Changing the spindler, spindles is super easy. Um, the fence assembly is, is good. Um, it does have, so it's got a, you know, it's got a micrometer adjustment or a, a micro adjustment on the outfeed side so that you can, you know, balance that if you're cutting a piece that, that's coming out, taking a little bit off. It does have also a, it's a little hard to see, but it has a micro adjustment in and out for the overall fence itself, which is a little tricky. It's got sort of a, it's got sort of a thing where you set it and then you can go forward and back a little bit and then you would have to reset it if it exceeds kind of how much it has to go forward and back. Um, but other than that, it, it's a, it's nice. Um, you know, it comes with this guard assembly that's got a, a down pressure um, device here, a clear safety guard that also acts as, you know, a pressure device to keep things against the fence. Um, the one thing I will say about it, um, and first thing I got a question about, you know, will it cut, you know, will it do coping stick for thicker pieces? And the answer is yes. I mean, like I said, I ran inch and three quarter white oak through it. Absolutely no issues with the power or anything else. Um, I'd say the only real criticism I have of it is that when I got it, the fence was not square to the sliding table. And so, you know, if you wanted to do, so like I did the coping operation on these windows and doors with the sliding table, which makes it super easy. But in order to do that, I had to adjust the fences to get them square. So if you take them off, there are these set screws behind them that allow you to, to square it all up. It took half an hour, 45 minutes, um, you know, it just would have been nice if it had been square from the factory, but not not a huge, not a huge issue. Um, so overall, I, I'm pleased with the shaper. It does it does what I need. I mean, it's not a tilting arbor shaper. It is variable speed. You know, there's it, it's not going to be a full scale, you know, industrial shaper, but it works really well for for probably most shaping operations. I haven't done curved work on it yet. Um, I think for a lot of people, a router table is all you need. Um, but a shaper is great to have. And again, if you're doing bigger, bigger pieces or raised panels or something like that, it's, it's a really nice tool to have. So again, overall, other than a really minor issue of having to adjust it to get it square to the sliding table, um, I'm very pleased with it. Dust collection's good. And yeah, that's it. Um, all right. So of course, the thing that probably most people are going to use the most is the table saw. So Overall, happy with the table saw. I mean, there are a few things that someone should know if you're thinking about buying this. One is that, so this machine has, uh, the Arbor has these two pins that go through holes drilled in the saw blade. And so what that means effectively is that you can only use Felder blades or Forest, who also will uh, drill their blades for that. Um, for me, that hasn't really been a problem, although I will say I was going to buy a Forest Woodworker 2 at one point because I'm a big fan of those blades. And, you know, they were like three months back ordered. So I just ended up buying another Felder blade. But the Felder blades are nice. I got them on got it on sale. I think it was like $85. So really, honestly, a pretty good deal. Um, the blade guard with a riving knife, um, it's perfectly serviceable. It's got decent dust collection like any guard of at times it's going to be in your way uh, and have to come off the riving knife because of the design does stick up above the blade so if you're doing an operation where the blade uh, is not cutting all the way through the piece of wood like a you know some kind of a slot you have to take the riving knife off but again that's you know not unusual um, so as far as cutting goes it you know it works really well uh, I think it's got about a four inch or slightly more than four inch height of cut, which is very nice to have at times. Um, you know, I, I mentioned in my earlier video that I, I learned this trade in a professional shop. We had a 10 foot stroke SCMI slider. So basically I, I 
learned how to do this stuff using a slider and and I like sliders. Now that said, you know, a sliding table saw is not for everybody. Most people probably find that they don't need it and they, they like some of the aspects of other saws that, you know, a slider has, has problems with, but I'm a fan. Um, this thing, the comfort model has a, has an 84 inch stroke on the slide and table, which there are times I've already found that maybe I wished I had a little longer stroke, but it's fine. Cuts anything up to, you know, seven feet, nice straight line rip. It's got a 53 inch capacity on the, the fence, which, you know, expands out to, I don't know, close to eight feet. Um, I did say in my other video too, so I bought extra one extra stop for it, which I leave permanently installed at, on the end. But yeah, and I've done some mitering with it when you, you know, you, you know, and there's plenty of videos out there showing how to, how to move these things around. Um, but you know, you can adjust the table relatively easy to miter with it. So again, basically pretty happy with it. Um, let's see the, so one, one comment I'll make, I bought this saw with a scoring unit, which I have not yet used and, you know, I may never use it, but I wanted to have the capacity to do it. When the saw came, because it has a scoring unit, the throat plate is this throat plate here. And if you look, you'll see that because it has the scoring unit, the opening for the throat is longer. And so I was finding, not, you know, not happily that a lot of offcuts and a lot of pieces of wood were getting sucked down into that opening pretty violently and it was, you know, to be honest with you, it was a little scary. So when I went to the dealer and I'm fortunate that I'm close to the dealer, I was mentioning it to them and he said, oh, well, you know, we, we have this other throat plate. So it turns out that if you don't get a scoring unit, there's another throat plate that, as you can see, the opening is much closer to the front of the blade. And so it was like five bucks. I bought it and that reduced that issue greatly um, to where really now I, I don't worry too much about it. It does come with a zero clearance insert, which is, is this, you know, it's a phenolic, eight millimeter phenolic heavy. It's got these machine cutouts on the back for to fit over certain parts. I do use the zero clearance insert sometimes when I really need it. But um, yeah, I mean, they cost like 80 bucks. Uh, you could probably make your own. I think there's a guy out there on the internet who sells them. But uh, I try to minimize how often I use it just because you know, I haven't gotten around to making more for myself. So that's not really a criticism. It's more of just a, if you do get one with a scoring unit and you aren't using the scoring unit, ask for the other throat plate so that you don't have that issue with pieces getting sucked down into the machine. Um, okay, I'm going to pause here because that's kind of the bulk of my experience with a saw except for the rip fence, which isn't on right now. So I'm going to take a quick pause and put it back on. Okay, the rip fence. I've got a whole nother video all about the rip fence. And so I'm not going to go back over everything I talk about in that. But I'll just summarize it by saying, so the saw came with this extrusion as the rip fence. Um, I personally found it to be too short. I didn't like how short it was. And, I, and it's also not as tall. I engineered a fix for it to put a, a longer rail on it, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, you know, it's, it was a relatively simple engineering fix. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with it. As far as stability, it would be nice if it was a little stiffer. Uh, it does have a little bit of play at the end, but also I think in one of the other videos I show, I've got this, you know, magnetic setting block that if I want to, I can just set behind it. Once I get it where I want it, turn it on, and that keeps it from moving. So it's really, you know, that was a $20 little fix for any play that I find in it. Um, so overall, I have to say, I'm, I'm with with my modification to it, I'm, I'm really pretty happy with it. I mean, I haven't had any major issues. Um, you know, there were some people, I don't know, I don't understand. Everybody's got, you know, <laughs> everybody has their, their different opinions about things. People have said like, oh, you know, like you bought the wrong machine. I don't know. People put aftermarket fences on their saws all the time. I mean, I don't see what the difference between this and putting like a Biesemeyer fence on your saw is. But uh, 
yeah, anyway, the the stock fence is, is adequate. Um, I just found it to be a little too short. And so I made a modification to it. All right, so in summary, uh, I'm pretty happy with the machine. Is it perfect? No, of course not. Uh, it's Is it a production machine? No, of course it's not. But for what I bought it for, which is to have a space-saving machine that has a lot of the capabilities of professional equipment, you know, it's very accurate, it's got great dust collection, it's powerful. Um, I find it to be quite capable, except for the relatively minor shortcomings that I talk about in this video. So would I buy it again? Yes. Um, can I compare it to some of the other, you know, the Minimaxes or, or the other products? I can't because I don't have experience with them. Um, but I would say that, you know, if you understand some of the peculiarities of this particular piece of equipment and what Felder offers, and those are things that you can live with, I think it's a, it's a really good piece of equipment. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased with my purchase. So take that for what it's worth and uh, good luck with what, uh, whatever equipment you decide to purchase for yourself.